questions for oral answer. And the first question stands in the name of the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Uh, Mr Speaker, my question is to the Prime Minister. In stating, quote, uh, this government introduced a balanced package of tax cuts, end quote, was he saying that his tax changes and the tax system are fair to all New Zealanders? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the tax changes we introduced in Budget 2010 were fair. Uh, they increased the fairness of the overall tax system compared to what we inherited from Labor. For example, two-thirds of the total costs of the income tax cuts went to reducing the bottom two income brackets, that is, income under 48000 a year. Almost three-quarters of income earners now have a top statutory rate of 17.5% or less. A number of groups now pay a fairer share of tax, including property speculators, leveraged foreign companies. We removed the incentive for people to shelter income in trusts, and we invested $120 million over four years in inland revenue and budget 2010 to improve the policing and compliance of tax rules. The Honourable Leader of the Speaker, Opposition. Uh, how is it fair that a person on the average wage of 48000 coping with a soaring cost of living, got just $28 a week to cope with that, but somebody on, say, $393,000 a year got $350 a week in tax cuts. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, um, there's fear in the sense that if one looks at the tax burden of what people pay, someone on $293,000 a year pays a lot more tax. Secondly, someone who earns a lot more pays a lot more in GST. And the reality of the New Zealand tax system is uh, that New Zealanders actually and higher incomes pay more in that area, uh, and a lot of the tax burden is met by those on the higher income brackets. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Does he think that the tax cut gained by a person on the minimum wage of $13.77 a week has fully compensated that person for the soaring cost of living? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, what it's compensated them for is the change in GST. And what the member opposite tries to do is confuse a position where there's a difference between GST rising from 12.5% to 15% and an overall increase in costs uh, because of inflation or other issues that might be prevalent, seasonal adjustments, for instance. And I know that, Mr Speaker, because, for instance, in the last two years of a Labor government, cheese went up 50%. And we'd waited nine years for a tax cut. I know that because the price of chickens went up 44%. I know that because milk went up 23%, petrol went up 22%, vegetables went up 21%. Order. I think the House has heard sufficient on that. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, why is it fair that in the budget tomorrow he's intending to take from people on low and middle income that are Kiwi savers over $500 a year that they were otherwise entitled to, but he's not touching the tax cuts of thousands of dollars a week that he gave to the highest income earners. The Right Honourable uh, Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, well, the first thing is uh, the member's only got one more sleep before he gets a chance to see the budget, so I wouldn't, wouldn't necessarily make assumptions today. Point of order, the the order, of... point of order's been called the Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I think we've worked very hard to get straight questions uh, and, and sir, having, having starting an answer in that gratuitous way, sir, uh, is, is something which doesn't help. Can I, can, I, can I also put in a second point of order, sir, and that has to do with the ministers are still required to address you when they are answering rather than the back bench or the gallery and nothing in between. Order. I think the latter, if we deal with the latter part first, it would be no surprise to the member that it's been a practice often of Prime Minister for years to often address the, the back of the House uh, order. I'm on my feet. Uh, so I'm not too troubled by that. Um, so long as members are aware when I get to my feet, and the Prime Minister did sit down pretty promptly when I got to my feet. So deal with the first one. I believe the Prime Minister's comment wasn't particularly unkind. It, it simply pointed out that there's one more day till the budget. And the question... The question was asked about a matter to do with the budget where, and, uh, and asserted that something was going to be happening in the budget. Kind of dangerous prior to the budget to make assertions about what's in the budget. And uh, order, order, order. And uh, 
The, uh, and so for the Prime Minister to make some reference to the fact that the budget's in a light-hearted way, and it wasn't a nasty sort of a way that the budget is still to come up, I don't think is desperately bad. So I, that's why I didn't pull the Prime Minister up. But I'll be watching to make sure that, uh, listening carefully in fact, to make sure when straight questions are asked that uh, the questioner is not attacked. And I don't think that was particularly unfair at all to make a light-hearted reference to the fact that there's still a day to go to the budget. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. So, Mr Speaker, as I was saying, the member only has one more sleep, um, to, and then he'll be able to see what's actually in, in the budget. Uh, and the second thing, Mr Speaker, I'd say, and it's, it's worth noting, that if one was to look at the top personal tax rate and the change in terms of 2010, the tax cuts, they amounted to about four to $500 million per year, which is something Labor goes on and on and on about, out of a $2.5 billion personal tax package. In other words, 20 per cent of the tax package went to the highest income earners. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, are the inland... Order. I want to hear the question. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, are the inland revenue figures quoted this morning correct in stating that the tax paid by 17,000... 244 dairy farms in 2009 totaled $26 million, representing the average annual tax paid by those farms of $1,506 each. If not, in what respect are those figures incorrect? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, there is a huge difference between turnover and profit, just like there is a big difference between lamb chops and sausages. Point of order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Order. Order. Now, the senior government whip should know that when a point of order is called that uh, there are no further interjections. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, the question was very specific. I didn't talk about income or turnover. I asked whether three specific sets of figures were correct, and if not, in what respect were they incorrect. I could not have asked a more straight question than that. Forgive order. I've just called uh, the, the senior government whip, so the deputy leader of the opposition will also not interject. If the member couldn't see what he was walking into and asking a question like that with those figures, I cannot assist him. Order, the member will not interrupt me. I listened very carefully to the question and uh, I, just, I just grimaced because I could pick what the kind of answer was going to be. And I cannot help members if they in fact don't think about the questions they're asking. The on is this Mr. Point Speaker, of order? Mr Speaker, I would ask you to examine the question that I asked. It was a straight Factual question. Are three Order. sets of figures Order. correct? The, the Leader of the Opposition will resume his seat. I will examine it, I promise him. But I'm absolutely certain that what I heard was very clear, and I'm not remotely surprised at the response to it. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. <laughs> Which would they like the order? A point of order has been called the Honourable Chairman. Uh, Mr Speaker, I know that some members opposite have a special interest in this area. Mr. Speaker. Order. The member will resume his seat immediately. Order. Now, some members will be leaving the House very soon. But the point I've been emphasising day after day is that members need to think about their questions when they ask them. And don't ask the Speaker to help members who, are, who walk into traps when they're asking questions. And forgive me, but that is the reality of life. And uh, I'm warning members that I'm not... Uh, I'm not in a mood to uh, be trifled with on this, but I've just seen it yesterday. For example, I cringed when I heard a supplementary question asked because I could just see what the answer was going to be, and I thought, surely not. And I just asked members to think about it. Order. Point of order, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, uh, I seek your leave to ask the question again, word for word, identical to how I asked it last time, and let you make a judgment as to whether any of your, the comments that you have just made relate to the question I asked. The question was absolutely in order. I have no problem with that whatsoever. But the nature of the, the, what the member actually asked, including his question, so it was going to lead to, I could just, I cringed as I heard it. And forgive me. 
I listen to questions very carefully because I have to try and protect. And, and I say to members of the opposition, I have sat ministers down. I sat the prime minister down on the previous question. I've not seen a previous speaker do that. I have helped the opposition more than I've seen previous speakers do. But I cannot assist, and there will be, I mean, some members of the front bench of the Labour Party will be leaving this House very shortly if they're not careful. I cannot assist if members do not think through the questions they're asking. I cannot assist where the, the answer, as I say, sometimes because I listen very carefully, because I will not, yesterday I stopped the Deputy Prime Minister on a straight question from the shadow leader of the House here, because the question was a straight question and the Deputy Prime Minister started to launch into an un unfair comment. But I cannot assist where questions are asked that lead to answers that I simply cannot help with that. I'll let, the, I'll let the Honourable Leader of the Opposition repeat his question. Thank you, Mr uh, Speaker. Are inland revenue figures reported this morning correct in stating that the tax paid by 17,244 dairy farms in 2009 totaled 26 million, representing the average annual tax paid by those farms of $1,506 each? If not, in what respect are those figures incorrect? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, I can't confirm whether they're correct or not. What I can say is they're a small slice of what is paid uh, by dairy farmers. And uh, if one was to take, and I just accept at face value, the press release put out by Dairy New Zealand, they say to set the record straight, our figures show that on average approximately $300 million in tax is paid each year uh, by dairy farmers. And I say to the member, if he doesn't know the difference between turnover and profit, goodness knows what his budget's going to look like one day. Point of order, the Order. 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 Honourable Trevor Mallard. Uh, Mr Speaker, I, I, I think it should be obvious to you from the tail end of that question there was no discussion of turnover in the Leader of the Opposition's question and to suggest that he didn't, there was no suggestion of turnover, it was all about profit and tax paid, sir. And can I ask you to, to say, tell us that you think that the Prime Minister's reply was appropriate but also to indicate now whether you think that that question Order. was wrong to start Order. with. First Order. My comments I made about the question previously, having seen all the material that, was, that uh, uh, the question related to, uh, forgive me, uh, I don't change my position on it whatsoever. Uh, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition, supplementary question. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. Is the Prime Minister saying that the material provided by the Minister of Inland Revenue in written answers to a member of this House were therefore wrong. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Uh, no, Mr Speaker, but what I am saying is that that reflects one portion of what may be paid by those farmers at one snapshot in time. Well, there, uh, here's the other portions then. There are lots of people that work on farms and they actually pay PAYE. There are many other years that go on farms. There are many other parts of the industry. Let me say to Trevor, let me say to Trevor Mallard, if he's telling us he's changing the company tax rules and the way they work for every company in New Zealand, then go for it. Go out there and tell New Zealanders you now pay tax on turnover, you don't pay it on profit. Well, I tell you what, that's going to be a staggering speech when David Cunliffe is in the paper today saying there are going to be some remarkable new things we're going to be surprised about. Wait till New Zealand companies find out they're paying tax on turnover. What a cracker that's going to be. Point of order, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Order. A point of order has been called. Uh, my point of order is this, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, the answer related to turnover, I never mentioned turnover anywhere in the question. Order. 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 Now, look, enough steam has been let off on this one, and uh, except both sides of the House feel quite strongly about it. I didn't stop the Prime Minister on another occasion because he was responding to a very loud interjection. And uh, if members choose to... I mean, the Prime Minister was answering in a pretty straightforward way until that point, until there was an interjection, uh, or a series of interjections. And, and I didn't want to kill that, that exchange, but I think we now have let off a lot of steam on this question, and we will come to some form of order now. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Supplementary question, Mr Speaker. 
If the figures given by the Minister of Inland Revenue are not incorrect, 